This is the Fellowship of the Link on Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. And what fellowshipy things are in the air? Um, I've got one. Shoot. I'm uh, sending Bentley a message right now. Um, uh, Fellowship of the Link is starting right now. It's this time every Wednesday and covers wikis and such not um uh bentley davis uh, uh who is friend to some of us um uh, is looking for a new new way to host his website um and so he's looking at static site generators and he ended up bouncing around and looking at massive wiki so uh he's kind of mashed up massive wiki builder and eleventy um, and we had a good chat this morning about Massive Wiki and Massive Wiki Builder and Bentley's project. Um, it sounds like he can kind of fold what he's doing into the Massive Wiki umbrella, um, which makes sense because um, he's interested in Markdown and links and things like that. Um, he's got a little bit different. Uh, that one of his one of his wishes was that as he makes a blog post, it would be nice if he could put the image files right next to the blog post so that you could grab a whole directory and put it someplace else as a nugget. Um, uh, uh, the massive wikis that we've built so far, uh, massive wiki builder lets you do that, no problem. But the ones that we've built so far, we tend to put the images all in a directory called underscore attachments or underscore images just to keep them out of, out of the way of um, the files, the MD files that you're usually looking at in Obsidian. But there's no reason that you have to do it that way. So Bentley's, you know, Bentley's way to do it would be perfectly fine too, and and useful when you're making nuggets. So anyway, um, out of that conversation today on on uh, Maths Wiki Wednesday, Bentley's suggestion was, how about uh, if we come up with a table of what what we think are the core features of uh, um, a builder of massive wikis. Um, uh, and then as he works and we work, we can kind of keep them synced up um, um, or at least know that we're, you know, we might be diverging and should talk or, or something like that. Hey, so, uh, so we're starting a table of, you know, here's, here's what it means to be a massive, uh, to, to be building massive wikis. You know, you have to use markdown files. You have to use files. You have to use markdown files. Um, you should build the whole repo kind of irregardless of, um, of directories. A lot of static site generators have specific ideas of how you need to set up their file hier hierarchy, and Massive Wiki Builder is more agnostic about that. So, yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, I imagine that's probably why he used Elementy, because it's probably the most neutral in that regard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was looking at his repos, browsing it on Mattermost, and uh, I think that's really cool. I think that's a good idea. A lot of the massive wiki stuff is uh, great, but yeah, I agree that it'd be nice to have um, sort of the build task be something, be handled by something that's more commonly and broadly supported, um, as opposed to relying on you guys to maintain your own a specific build process. Yep. Um, he came up with, uh, he convergently came up with an idea that I had as well, which is to kind of dynamically render a massive wiki directly out of the GitHub repo, um, rather than going through a build process and having a static website. So and that's yeah. another kind of outcome of, of some brainstorming. Yeah, I mean, like, you could just have a GitHub action that builds every time to commit. It's not that hard. We um we have that actually now yeah. with Massive Wiki Builder, but this is something different where you run a client in the front in the in the web browser. Um, so you think you're looking at a, you know it doesn't really matter a static website or a dynamic wiki or whatever whatever you think it is, but it looks like a website. In the back end, it's actually using GitHub as kind of a file system. Um, So yeah, that I means... imagine that's hard to like make SEO compatible, right? Mm, yeah, it it um it would be compatible with the way we do Massive Wiki Builder right now, and it would also be 
any anybody who has a, a folder of you know a docs folder with markdown files um, you know anywhere in github is all of a sudden something like a massive wiki without having to build it without having to ask them without having to you know get them to figure out what massive wiki builder is or figure out how to install python or or node or whatever it just works so it feels like sometimes I'm routed to a file on GitHub. At least that's what the URL looks like. And when I get there, it looks like a web page. It looks like a, actually a, a functioning document and all that. What am I hitting there? What, You're probably different? hitting GitHub pages, which is their version of static hosting. OK. And that's, that's and a, it's a GitHub offer that is? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of integrated with with the repo um, and kind of not. I, at least last time I looked, it uses a separate. Um, um, sorry, Chris. It's always fun to see you. Yeah, even um, even though you have to struggle with uh, Jitsi every single time. <laughs> um, uh, so um, it's it's kind of integrated with your repo. It's usually a separate branch, huh. um, so it's almost almost like a separate repo in a way, um, but. It's it, basically it, it, like lowest tier free hosting that is uh, really sort of optimized for static sites. And it's based on Jekyll, I think. Well, Jekyll's just the default configuration, but like all of the eleven T sites I've shared here, mm -hmm. context center, all of that, that's all GitHub pages using a build task with eleven T. Um, though you could use any static site there. So right? what all it the, needs is the, to output HTML at the end. The, the Jekyll thing is kind of the equivalent of Massive Wiki Builder, and GitHub Pages as an infrastructure is our equivalent, what, what we use Netlify for. And what is Eleventy adding to the solution? It's another so, builder, like yeah. Jekyll or Massive Wiki Builder. OK. And so and none of what we've talked about thus far would make Massive Wiki more of a wiki, by which I mean editable in place with concurrent writers. So the the code name for the way I've thought of that front end thing is Zircon. Um, so I'll, I'll say Zircon. Um, with Zircon, there's an idea that just like a regular, like an old style wiki, there's an edit button, edit this page button. Um, and uh, you can actually feel like you're editing the wiki. Um, you, you are editing the wiki, but it, it flips this, the, the page into edit mode. You type stuff, you click save, and it updates the, the GitHub repo on the back end. But it's not doing concurrent. Is it doing record locking, or is it doing any kind of? Uh... It, it would probably be uh, last edit wins. OK. And and there's another wrinkle, which is, Pete, you didn't talk about authentication in. Uh, so there would be kind of an anonymous mode if you, if uh, where somebody who gives you that browser, Zircon, um, uh, embeds their their authorization to edit GitHub stuff. Um, I guess you have to integrate that with the, the person who owns the wiki. Um, or you can get something fancier and do fork and polls, or you know, there, there's a lot of, or you could use your own GitHub credentials. There's uh, the authentication piece. I kind of glossed over it, and it gets more interesting fast. But is, is this the same thing you were calling Zirconia before? Yes. OK. Yeah. And that's complementary or different from Opal? Uh, different. OK. In ways I don't oh. fully understand, but that's So okay. Opal was the idea that we could uh, use something like Electron. It would probably be something else now. Um, to make Obsidian Lite and, and, uh, with it integrated instead of having a separate plugin for Git um, with arcane buttons and stuff like that, we would make it you know, streamlined for massive wiki use uh, with Git under the hood. So much simpler version of Obsidian without all the bells and whistles and extra features and plugin capability and stuff like that. Gotcha. Um... And do any of these things play nice with operational transformation or CRDTs or anything that makes concurrent Excellent. work better, easier, Excellent happier? question. Um, it's, they're kind of disjoint. They, you could put them together, and you don't have to. Uh -huh. um, I was wondering, actually, in, in the call today, if we could make a line-oriented CRDT to replace Git. That would be awesome. Huh. OK. 
Um, and then I will say that Rich Burden's uh, system is built on ECHO, which is the eventually consistent hierarchical object database, which is based on CRDT. That's a, an aspect of DXOS. Is there a link to that? That he's already built. Uh, yes. Well, let me give you, uh, I don't know that I have a link to Echo, but I have a link to DXOS, which is his project. And it's got a lot of docs, I think. A lot of docs. Um... I, this is, I don't know, that's the URL I get echo from, but actually maybe it's, yeah, I guess that works. <clears throat> echo, Halo, and Cube. Yeah. And a lot of, and I think a bunch of this is a working platform that he's, that he's got going, and I'm trying to get him to come demo. I, I'm actually not... <clears throat> Not good at tracking people down and shepherding them, shepherding them into the conversations, but I'd like him to present what he's got to either the Free Jerry's Brain call or here at uh, the fellowship. I, I've got an oddball wish, uh, which uh, I, I live in a community where I, I participate in a community where um, somebody is super excited about spatial web, um, it's called, uh, which is, it, it seems to me like it's, overlapping a bit with uh, DXOS or solid or IPFS in, in a way, in a way it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I think if spatial web is obsessed with uh, geolocation in a bad way and that, <laughs> that detracts from everything they may be trying to do as far as I can, as far as I'm concerned. And I, I this is just I, an amateur, everything amateur has a physical location. Shouldn't you be able to reference it? <laughs> Not really. I, yeah. I, uh, I have significant problems with, with spatial web. Yeah, yeah. For, for me, yeah. I've, I've like set it aside out of the range of candidates for what the next platform could be. Um, in the community I'm in, there's a, a strong champion who, um, yep. you know, who's, who's going to continue to bring it up until, um, until we all are living in the spatial web yeah. or until, you know, we, we convince them that it's not not what he thinks it is. Yep. Totally understand. Is the spatial web something you guys are familiar with? Have you heard of it? Uh, we'll put some links in the chat. Is on. Yeah, I'm yeah, not well, familiar with it. I put it the, in... the idea there's two main things, uh, HTSP, I think, and H. HSML, 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 and HTSP. I'll put the link. So, with the the, the uh, amazing powers of those two two IEEE standards, they're standard track IEEE things, which means they're blessed and amazing and wonderful. Sorry, I shouldn't be snarky. Um, <laughs> IEEE does many wonderful things. I was um, appreciating the snark. I I, uh, I appreciate 802.3 and 802.11. Um, uh, and probably many other IEEE things that I don't even know they exist. Anyway, the idea is between HSML and HSTP, uh, we can we have all the tools that we need to specify all the things to have all the things interoperate. IoT, AR, VR, data. Um, uh, they they they're even kind of subsuming um, one of the um, uh, one of the languages like Lexon, I don't think it's Lexon that they're using hmm. that is both machine readable and, and uh, also code, or sorry, machine readable and human readable. Interesting. And maybe it's I'm all wrong about this and the spatial web is the one that wins. Yeah, who knows? It's a toothpaste. Um, did, did, you, did you all read the article about Ron Popeil many years ago? I think it was titled The Pitch Man. It rings a bell. But... So do you, do you know about Ron Popeil? Uh, if you watch late night TV, you would have uh, seen his pitches. He was like, here's here's the pitch man. I've got it. Uh, it's a, it's a Mal yet another Malcolm Gladwell article. But he was one of the original like dudes who'd stand by the side of the road and sell you a potato peeler that was better than everybody else's potato peeler, except he would invent a bunch of his stuff. <clears throat> and I hope that link still works. I didn't test the link right now. Um, cause Gladwell, Gladwell moves his, uh, archive. It actually goes to the Bomber Mafia right now. Oh, good. Um, 
Anyway, Popeil was like a genius of, of selling stuff and then inventing stuff that people would just go buy and spend some money on. But he could convince you of it. He was like a fabulous stand-up pitch man. Who, and tireless. Absolutely tireless. Sorry for the distraction. Um, we now return to our regularly scheduled program, which was already in progress. Uh, Michael, nice to see you. Uh, we were talking about massive wiki futures and projects for uh, building site generators, a uh, project called Zircon in Pete's nomenclature for massive wiki at this point, uh, and how that fits with the rest of the constellations of stuff that we're talking about. <clears throat> Any other fellowshipy kind of things going on in people's heads? Chris, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been thrown for a loop with some family health issues lately. Oh, but sorry. Eating up a lot of time, and now we're just trying to like make it through the end of the school year with the twelve-year-old, so so that we can actually go see the family off and away. How many weeks left in the school year? In yours? Uh, by a week and a half. Oh, good. Maybe, maybe tops. So, not too bad. Um, I haven't been keeping a. There's some interesting stuff I've seen, but I'll have to. I have to process it before I can. Yep. Spit it I back thought. Back. Sorry. Go ahead, Arm. I was gonna say I thought uh, some of the blue sky stuff has been pretty interesting. They open sourced their like actual app, their web app, um, and they open sourced their algorithm with the idea that anyone could build a like blue sky app that, inter that interacts with the spec, that interacts with the stream and gets um, like a different version of suggestions and algorithms. I thought it was really interesting to watch. I haven't had time to play with it, but like in terms of like, social networks i feel like this is a sort of best practice right i think we're never going to get away from the idea that people want algorithms to decide what they see in social networks because there's too much stuff but being able to see what the algorithm is that's actually live unlike twitter's um which is just a released version um and then being able to create situations where you can sub in your own algorithm based on what you build yourself is something really cool. Uh, uh, Blue Sky has been very interesting personally to me, um, both because of the technical spec, but also because like, I think they're doing the right stuff. Uh, and that's pretty interesting to see because I can't think of the last time I saw an entity of that type doing the right stuff. <laughs> Will will they get the sociology and adoption right? I don't know. The, the, that's the big theory, right? The question of if you do all the right stuff, does the does the community form itself into the right shape? Um, and they're betting, yeah, you do all the right stuff, you get the the right community. Um, I'm not so sure, but hey, uh, they're giving up. They're opening up a lot of tools that people can try to approach this problem with, which I think is exciting. I mean, it, look, it's the best you're going to get out of a company run by Jack Dorsey in Silicon Valley, et cetera, et cetera, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it open source? Yeah, yeah. Um, so people, so if they're not doing it right, somebody might do it right. Exactly. Exactly. Might do it right for them or might do it right as themselves, right? It, I think it's... Yeah. yeah. Does, does anybody remember Orkut? Raise, yeah. your, raise your hand if you remember Orkut. And, I and took a picture of the Orkut uh, license plate. Oh, and nice. And, and it just uh, apropos what you were saying, Pete, about it, w w which way might it go, but Orkut became like a Brazilian hotbed because a whole bunch of... Bra I've forgotten who it was, somebody we know uh, a social media maven went down to Brazil with a whole bunch of logins or whatever and convinced everybody to get on 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 Orkut and, and it worked. It's like Orkut suddenly became like the Brazilian hangout and everybody else dropped off. And that was from 2004. 
kind of like adopting Bitcoin, but it, it went right. Yeah. So what, if you were running Blue Sky, what would you do to, to, to track better? Yeah, I, I, right now, I think, you know, it's very difficult to know what I would do better than what Facebook is doing. Uh, sorry, than what, uh, than what Blue Sky is doing. <laughs> that was a funny, uh, funny slip. A bit of a Freudian slip, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, was, uh, Facebook is doing everything, <clears throat> but they're on my brain because of a variety of other problems. Um, yeah. yeah, here, I'll share the links here. Let's see. I mean, like, if you're going to do this thing in the way you're going to do this thing, I think this is the best way to do it. And, like, outside of that, I don't know what to do without diving deeper into the code, hmm. um, which I just have not had time to do. I thought this was really cool. Somebody used the, um, the open source stuff to create Blue Sky as an IRC window. <laughs> That's the last link in there. That's awesome. Um, That's funny. Yeah. I, I have to say, if I if I think back in history, doing the tech right isn't the part that made the community right. Yeah. And and a, a good example of community done right was Flickr. Um, and they did a lot of cool things with the tech, and they were they were gentle but effective community moderators. But I think the thing that really kickstarted Flickr was the fact that they had a built-in pre preset community of people waiting for game never ending so they were all people who were there for fun they were all people who were there for engagement with other people um, and they were waiting for you know just the platform to do it and then Flickr ended up being the platform that they were on to do it and the early days of Flickr it was a bunch of people having fun together and and subverting the tech actually often, doing the wrong things with the tech, doing playful things with the tech. Same thing with Twitter, you know, a, a bunch of the cool stuff from Twitter, the hashtags, the the early, the, the real version of RTs, all that kind of stuff, the ats, the ats, that was all uh, inventions, playful inventions by people on the platform um, that, you know, it, it the wasn't- The name tweet. The name tweet. And yeah. um, by the way, Game Never Ending was created by the same company, Ludicorp, as as uh, Flickr. Yeah, yeah. Flickr was, was the failure. Stuart, of, Stuart of Game Butterfield. Never yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Katarina Fake. Yep. And Katarina. Yeah. People love to mention Stuart without mentioning Katarina. So I Katarina was <laughs> critical. Yeah. Um, as were um, I've forgotten the name. The there were a couple other community people. I remember George Oates was was key. Um, she's an, an engineer, but she does really good engineering and social engineering. I think. And Cervani was there. Um, Paul Lloyd. Um, and there are so many individual communities that were there. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, that existed in adjacent ways and probably still do. It's sort of one of the yeah. flaws of the way social media systems are set up that you can't it's like unless somebody has a site that has a little button for all the platforms they're active on there's you know very little connective membrane yeah. which you know something like activity pub or blue sky or you know i mean the idea that you know i assume you could do this on activity on, on blue sky too but the idea that with activity pub you can be like in one you know in one use in one stream as one user you can be following the youtube analog and the you know the instagram analog and the twitter analog of a certain subject um i mean it it's it's not there yet for sure but you know that that sort of cross platform cross medium um, aspect seems like something to work for. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of an activity pub thing, right? Yeah. Using activity pub, you can subscribe to activity pub, YouTube, activity pub, Twitter, activity right. pub, Flickr, all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Though, though I, it, you have to do it. it. It's like, I mean, the one thing that I 
I still think is missing again, you know, I've said this to you before, um, you know, sort of went too far in, in, in building factor on this, you know, quest, but you know, the idea that you want to isolate, yes, you can follow all those things as a user, but unless you can create different user identities, you can't compartmentalize the following on the experience. Like you can, you can put them all together, but you can't, Pull them, tease them apart um, by subject matter so easily in, in one identity. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like to what we said earlier, the core of these things is like being able to really hack at them and play around with them and use them in ways that they are not intended to use yeah. is how these things are best built. Yeah. And as they become more and more restrictive, the uh, ability to use the platform is less and less uh, effective for that type of good communities. I'm trying to find the uh, blog post about this, but like there's a concept about this in um, in digital humanities back when I worked in academia and worked with folks like that, where like, ah, yeah, deformation, right? Mm -hmm. The idea that you should be deforming the platforms and the systems you use in order to make them into a thing that is effective for you. Yeah. Uh, here we go. I found the blog post that I remembered. Um, I'm going to make a note of this. I think like that's the reason why I've sort of, I mean, Mastodon and Activity Pub too, uh, I think are in this category, right? But I don't know. I I have like technical issues with the Activity Pub protocol um, that make it a little difficult for me to see it being that. I think you still need these big. You either need like single person, you either need to be hosted on your own thing for yourself, or you need to be on something that's broader than yourself to really get the most out of Activity Pub. There isn't really any like, it's very difficult to see Activity Pub as a hobbyist specification um, in the way that like, that's what makes HTML and that version of the, the flat web, for lack of a better term, um, useful and great. And like, it seems to me like Blue Sky is moving in that direction, but I honestly am not sure, right? It's very, very early. Um, it's just the things that make me sit up and pay attention, it's been doing. <laughs> I'm done. Go ahead. I, I wanted to maybe this will be a little bit controversial, but that's one of the things I, I like about Noster is it feels like uh, like easily deformable. Um, and a little bit of discussion with a friend, John Abbey, also made me think, I guess I, this is another discussion I've had somewhere else too, but um, the one, one of the accidental things that I think is really cool about Noster is they replicated the the RFC style um, uh, you know let's 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 make standards but none of the standards all of the standards are optional it's the ones that succeed and, and get used that that actually define you know define what you what uh, what you need so um, IETF work that way um, kind of like Python um, peps work that way um so by contrast uh I, I i tooted this a little bit on mastodon the mastodon um innovation thing and the community thing it, it's really squashed i don't know so much about activity pub but it does look like kind of a hairball um to play with rather than nostra ended up being this composable thing where you 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 know, you, you to to make a client, you you end up doing um, six or ten or twelve of the NIPs they call them, uh, Nostra Improvement Protocols or whatever. Um, you know, and and 
together the different clients and servers and stuff are competing based on fitness uh, and you know if there's if there's a new modular component that comes up um, say uh, micropayments you know somebody will implement it and and then their users will say wow this is super fun to use and then other clients will pick it up and implement it and so you get this nice marketplace of ideas and 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 uh, iterative development and com composability deformability is built into the you know into the the community um and the, the use of it yeah i mean i think that nostr is really interesting too I think that I was very hesitant of it initially, but um, I, I am sort of moving more in its favor because I am, like I said, I am very interested in it conceptually. I think it's still pretty narrow for what it intend, like it, it has a very narrow thing that it is intending to do. Um, but I think that's fine. Like, it's good. Like, we don't need everything to do everything. Um, and that is great. Um, it's very narrow for what it wants to do. It's very narrowly wants to do a specific thing. But uh, for that thing, I think it's, I am more positive on it than I was before. Um, and I like, like, I like the idea of it. Right, this this sort of very um, unanchored standard, right? Where you do things, and the standard does not require allegiance to a particular domain in order to use it. And I like the the idea of the delay friendliness. I don't know if I think we might have discussed it in this group, but have you all seen the? Um, the website that's like solar powered, or just sort of turns off when there's not enough sun. Missed that one somehow. Uh, that reminds me of Secure Scuttlebutt, though. Yeah. Uh, here it is. Low Tech Magazine is what it's called. Oh. Uh, let me share this in the chat. So, like, I think conceptually, like, this is a really cool idea, right? Like, you build the website with the idea that it has accessibility, like it, it, accessing it as a non-urgent affair, right? It's not going to be the same for every single website, but for websites like this, for systems like Noster, arguably for systems much larger, even, right? Like the always on is something we just assumed needed to be the case, but it's fine, right? Like you get a link and you go to it and it's there's actually a discussion about like an http code for their you know site is down because it's unpowered at this moment right it's down because it's unpowered for this moment you save the link in some link saving tool and you come back to it later and that's fine right and i like the idea of nostr which is sort of similar which is you can have a system that's offline for a while and then it comes back online and it sends and it um and it receives and then it can go back offline and i think i don't know if nostra is the best for this right like i've just i haven't had time there either to go deep into the technical nature of it but i think like conceptually yeah chris to your point like this idea of systems that are progressively enhanced that treat always on is something that doesn't need to be the case i think there is a, a really solid concept in there um and like the idea of the coming back to us right like the idea of node systems that where the notes share with each other and you can retrieve notes from another system and save them in your own system and that is also attached to something that is local to your machine i think like that is part of that concept i don't really know what what it's called or if there's a word for it um uh, but i really like that idea and i like how I like the opportunity and the idea of it. And I think there's more there that can be used. It's awesome. Thanks. Wanted to say hi to Bentley. Hi, Bentley. Hi, Bentley. Um, I don't I don't know if you've been here before. Uh, Bentley, I, I apologize, maybe. Um, I, I covered 
some of uh, Massive Wiki 11D Builder yeah. stuff and talked about that. That's cool. You're fully informed representative, Massive yeah. Wiki Builder 11D. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'm just popping in. Uh, I'll have to leave early, but see if I can provide any value to the discussion. Yeah, by the way, real quick, uh, that looks great. I'm highly positive of it. I like that idea a lot. Uh, so uh, another thing that I I wish I had more time to look at, but I'm hoping that I can take a look at what you're working on and maybe try it out for myself at some point, because I think that's a great idea. Aram's fluent in Massive Wiki and in 11T. Awesome. Yeah. As well as many other things. I'm also kind of abstracting some of the code outside of 11D, so so Pete and I can share among our builders if we want. Um, so that'll be interesting. What else is interesting? In a Have any of you um, uh, played with Mem much? Any bit? What is that? Mem. It's a um, it's a Rome like note taker. Yeah, sort um, of. Sort of. Or not? Um, it. I, I haven't played with it much, but it looks interesting, and I was. Um, it has the the single player mode aspects that um, you know, single player mode coupled with. Um, ability to share communally. And I was wondering before I spent a lot of time with it, um, whether anybody else had. Um, the other thing that I'm tracking that I actually haven't gotten access to because it just came out is a board. I don't know if you've, um, are any of you familiar with uh, Postlight Studios in New York who, okay, so Paul Ford and, um, and, uh, which Ciotti left, sold, I think they sold Postlight to its employees or something nice like that and left and set up a consultancy. And then they just came out with a product called a board that is basically kind of kills me because it's like exactly the MVP of Factor that we should have just released with and they did. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and it's, it's, you know, you can sign up for the list and it's, you know, they're inviting people over the, I mean, they launched it like two days ago. Um, but it's basically a thing for you to save links as cards, put them in stacks and, um, and then share them and comment on them. You know, it, it's, it's a lot like, factor without the RSS feeds and the more complex stuff. Um, and it, uh, knowing what I know about them and how they build, um, I'm inclined to think it's going to be not bad. And it's, uh, I think they're, they have a, I think it might just be a board.com. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't like they look like they're being very ambitious um, about it, which is cool. Um, though I don't think they're open source, which is too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or or built on Blue Sky or or uh, Activity Pub or anything else like that. Um, while we're mentioning things like uh, Mem and Aboard and Factor, I wanted to throw um, my hub in there. My hub is um, by Matthew Lowry, um, and it's uh, it's another bookmarker thingy. Um, yeah. uh, and if anybody wants uh, wants an account, he'll give you an account. It's it's kind of in free preview, and it may or may not go someplace. We'll see. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've I've played with it a teeny tiny bit. I mean, I've got an account, but. Um... It, it seems intriguing, and I just find myself wishing we had a structure to just mash our stuff together and, you know, make something yeah. that 
mm-hmm. that works for different kinds of people. Because a lot of the things along those lines, and I think um, my hub is a little like that, seem a little bit complicated for a consumer, um, but you know, but cool for everybody here. And like having different gradations of stuff that's meant to be for the simplest of consumers and tracks into this. I mean, you and I have been in conversations where this came up before, but the sort of um, Trello, uh, what is it, Trello? I always forget the intermediate one on up to, um, uh, I'm forgetting the more advanced one, the one that we're using in the, um, in the NSF. Airtable. No, not, it's uh, uh, Asana. 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 Yeah, and they're all Asana products, but there's an intermediate one that's sort of like for to-do lists, punch lists, but more complicated than Trello. And they're all, you know, they all have portability between them because they're all from the same Uber company. Um, anyway. I, if I, I, as far as I know, I was going to actually spell out the, uh, as far as I know, Trello is Atlassian. Atlassian, right. And, and then they're Atlassian all, yeah. has Jira. Yeah, right. So they have Trello, Jira, and Asana. And is, they're... Is Asana Atlassian too? Yeah, yeah. Oh my Pretty God. Sure. <laughs> They've been buying up stuff. Yeah. They bought Trello. It wasn't uh, rich. Yeah, Trello, Trello existed and then they bought it, which made sense because it was sort of the like easy on-ramp to yep. the other stuff. And I like that. I mean, it's as a as a you know corporation, it's a good strategy. But in thinking about how we do this viably and make the uber cool product for the people who are sophisticated enough to use it, but also have the entry, you know, the on ramp. Um, I think there's something there. Yeah, agreed. A uh, quick question: Is a board like a browser? A board is, uh, I mean, I haven't got my hands on it yet. I've been on the waiting list. I should, you know, they said within a couple of days. Um, uh, it is a browser extension that turns anything. And I think you can also, if, it, if it's like Factor, I think you can also just make a note be a card. But the browser extension turns any site, any link into a card. Um, and this exists in browser, but you know you have these um, these stacks of cards that are either yours alone on a certain subject, or and they you can also make cards for things that are on your hard drive, I believe. Um, I don't, I'll, I'll know better once I played with it, but you know for, they they talked about it on their podcast a little bit, and uh, um, you know the the last. The last two Ziadi and Ford podcasts have been um, on the subject. And if you've ever listened to their podcasts, you know they're, you know, kind of adorably bantery, um, but there is some information in there. <laughs> all right. That's interesting. Yeah, I've liked all of um, Ford's previous work. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Well, I signed up. Maybe I'll get it access at some point. Yeah. So I can't confirm. We were saying that Atlassian had bought Asana. I'm seeing no proof of that. Well, let's let's look at Atlassian and their product offerings because that'll tell you. I'm I'm That's pretty sure there are like three or four, um, and I thought Asana might be one of them. Gotcha. Um, pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think so. Products, Jira, Confluence, Trello, Jira Service Management. Oh, I don't Confluence. see. It's I don't. Confluence. Sorry. Yeah, it's Confluence. Yeah. 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 No, Hassan is still independent. Yeah. Yep. It's traded independently. Interesting. Phew. I also, I also <laughs> really thought it was bought by Atlassian because they like. Huh. It I has know. that whole Atlassian look. And I didn't uh, think I that Justin think. Rosenstein would sell to anybody like that. So. I used to use Asana a lot when I was a freelancer. I did like it as a project management tool. Very fa- it's it was always very interesting to me that it was like they basically just took out 
the version of um, project management they did at Facebook and turned it into a standalone product. Mm -hmm. Intriguing. So I could bring up an old topic. Please. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about um, kind of a centralized inbox. I can't remember who someone was saying that they want us they don't want everything's in the same app because they would get all kind of mixed up. And I wanted to challenge that um, that framing because it's not it's not the fact that they need to be in different apps to keep them straight, but they need to be in separate buckets, right? You need to have separation. But I shouldn't. So it's nice that I communicate with some people through Slack and some people through Mattermost. But every once in a while, I have a community that's in both, and I don't remember which one it was. And if I could take this channel from Mattermost and this channel from Slack and put them in one central place and a separate bucket from everything else, including emails, text, everything, Facebook, regardless of whether it's legal or not. Uh, <laughs> Because what I'm discussing is patently illegal in several cases. Um, uh, that's that's still kind of one of the side quests that I'm hoping for. And then you, you ought to be able to own your tractor too, but yeah, <laughs> and your seeds. And gosh. it's it's interesting that I could have a communication with a friend, and a friend can communicate with me, but but I'm not allowed to access that except through their predefined um but it's craziness keyhole so it might be interesting to challenge that by building a system and then saying come and get me absolutely <laughs> good pride for my cold dead hands um yeah the idea i mean when you think about like uh postal law and sorry some of you heard me say this before, but you know, just that um, the idea that you aren't allowed to read your correspondence to and from somebody, A, it's illegal for anybody to do anything with it while it's in that envelope in transit. It's a federal crime for them to like, you know, record anything about it. Um, and, and you and the other person have complete access I mean, putting aside the physical which piece of correspondence ends up where you know you have complete access to that um independent of whether you use this post office or that post office um and challenging that legally on that basis i think is a really really worthy thing i mean i've been in some other conversations with other people about that as a kind of nonpartisan legislative fight worth having but all your communication and data you know should belong to you high bar yeah yeah so it'd be nice to have a little kind of standard system that allows you to scrape anything from anywhere and put it anywhere which i guess you can kind of do with you know, you could hack it together with, I can't remember the name. <laughs> it used to, I mean, if then that, then that, or it's if many it's that, kind of different uh, replacements yeah. and right. newer versions. Um, you can hack something, but to make something kind of more like, more um, muggle friendly. So a couple things. Um, I, one of my pet peeves of the modern communication environment is when messaging happens everywhere and there's no unified search, at least for where the hell the thing happened. And I don't remember which Slack channel it was in or whether it was, if it was a LinkedIn message, I'm totally lost. Like, like things are just hiding all over the place and it's very hard to find them. So that problem is huge for me. I totally agree. Um, I might be able to back into where you're going, Bentley. I don't know. 
Um, have you heard me describe Linkedo before? Not up keto, but Linkedo. I might have uh, mentioned it. I might have been Peter's Brink conversations. Briefly, um, a long time ago, I realized I was using eight different word processors on any given day. Uh, and at that time, it would have been Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, WordPress, and a couple other things. And I'm like, and they all had a different command for how you embed a link and whatever. What if you could take your favorite text processor and pop it out of the interface and teach it how to push and pull files to any of those devices in the right format appropriate for the, that device. So you would use your own editor. And if it was Emacs, let's pretend I love Emacs, which I do not, um, then my version of Emacs would know how to push a blog post out onto WordPress, onto the WordPress site. And I wouldn't have to worry about the WordPress editor, which is all kind of adapt. Um, and so you could then flip and sort of work through it. There was an, an added piece of this. I had Likido fast and slow, which was, I hate the notion that multi humans can't multitask. I just saw a post about that this morning. I'm like, you know, some humans are really good at it. It might be just a switch or a variable. And what if we all, what if we optimized our tools for Linkedo slow was cover everything else, distraction free, deep focus in one thing. Linkedo fast was how do I use this little pop-up editor to go do a whole lot of stuff in, and, and, and now I'm adding in features like Oh, I just got an, I see this interesting post. I know that I should repost this to two lists and forward it to two people with comments. And foop, how do I do that at super hyper speed? Um, oh, I want to blog about this, but not now later. How do I put it in the queue for that? Oh, I need to add this to my brain. But how do I execute lots of different things on the flow that's coming at me all the time? That was sort of Linkedo fast. And last point. The problem with pulling something out of Slack as just a message or out of email or out of text stream is that I, I get so much knowledge from the context that each of these messages is in, the tool it's in, the previous messages, the thread. That's how I reload into my head what the hell was going on at the time. So I find it hard to imagine a unified uh, interface where those things would commingle gracefully and I would still be able to figure out what's going on and what it's going to look like when it goes back. So that's a lot of stuff all at once, but that, that's kind of where, where your, your idea takes me. Yeah. In, in response to that, I think that that's the beauty of the card that is a link to the context. Um, that you want to be able to, to search and get the search result that says there is something from this person using that, you know, word that you searched on um, in this Slack conversation, click, go to that Slack conversation in that context. It's not, it's not necessarily saying that everything you ever do is going to have to exist in this one app mm -hmm. it's that this app is going to perform, you know, have this connective mycelial to use your <laughs> favorite pro mycelia. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also, so that kind of brings in, I mean, really what this is getting to is into your word processor thing is being able to have custom interfaces. So separating the data from the interface, which technically is extremely, extremely difficult and wrought with bugs, but um, and potential exponential explosion of features and complications. But that doesn't, that's not a reason not to do anything. I mean, we did eventually put someone on the moon and we're going to do it again, apparently. Yeah, it took a little effort and we did get like freeze dried ice cream out of that. Right. Um, so yeah, so kind of this whole dismantling thing. And, and I think search is an interesting use case. And the other one is just custom algorithms. So you have all the data from all the sources coming in and you choose how it represents and then having a public library of, of sh algorithms that people could share. Um, uh, and you know, that, that would be kind of the ultimate kind of ecosystem. Um, yeah, so that's. That'd be fun to have, maybe not fun to build. <laughs> well, it's interesting because the more, I mean, I think back in that same conversation, a piece of the, the Linkedo pitch was that the only difference between an email and a web page, if they both use some variants of HTML, is that one of them says, where do I put this on the web? It has a URL. 
and the other one says, who do I send this to? It has a, an email address. The rest is just a document made with the same piece parts exactly, um, and maybe not precisely exactly, but close enough for government work. And so I realized that all these nuggets, like the, there isn't that much difference between a, a web log and a wiki and something else, because a web log is just a sequence of pages that happen to be sorted in cron order with some header and footer material inserted. Awesome. Why those couldn't also be separate pages on a wiki, I don't understand. And that's part of my conversation for years now with, with Pete about like, you know, wikis and blogs and how all these things aren't. They're, they're different in how you manifest them and manifesting them differently makes them different tools, gives you a different kind of rhetoric, leverage, rhythm, all those kinds of things are cool, but those are just variables to play with. There isn't functionally that much difference between these things. And so, and so if we can simplify a little bit, then the creation and curation of these things ought to be a lot easier than it is. And there shouldn't be such a wide variety of crazy formats and tools. 